Language is one of the defining features that makes us human. It has allowed us to pass on knowledge through learning and form complex societies that we see around us today. So what is it about us that has allowed us to develop such sophisticated ways of communicating when our closest cousins, the apes, just shriek and grunt? Joe, can you just tell us a little bit about why our brains are different from apes? Our hypothesis is that um, what's different is that the wiring patterns in our brains have changed a little bit over about the seven million years since we diverged from our chimp cousins. But that can have really big implications because different parts of the brain start interacting in new ways and it allows us to do new things. And in this case, the hypothesis is it allows us to do language. So what is it that you're doing to try and understand this? So one of the methods that we use is um, a technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. And TMS is just a way of generating a very strong but small magnetic pulse. And the pulse passes through um, skin and skull non-invasively. It doesn't affect anything. But when it gets to brain cells, it interacts with the brain cells and causes them to fire. And this is really useful for us because we can ask very, very subtle questions about how engaged the brain is when people are doing simple tasks, like listening to language, for instance. So you think that there may be a role in part of the brain that controls our movement in understanding speech. So this is this interesting idea that um, recognizing speech isn't entirely due to just the sounds. You actually involve the motor parts of your, your system as well. That is, the ability to produce speech is important in recognizing speech. And it's a very controversial idea. So we know that animals communicate in lots of different ways. Uh, do they use this or not? None of them have the subtlety, the, the very small sound differences that are really critical to recognizing the differences between two words. You're going to take us through one of the experiments you've been doing. What does it involve? Well, what will happen is um, John, my PhD student, is going to wire me up. And what we'll do is we'll listen to speech sound from, in fact, a Radio 4 broadcast. And there'll be patches of, of radio speech, and then there'll be patches of noise. And during that, there'll be TMS, brain stimulation, happening at fairly uh, random intervals where we can measure what's actually happening in the, the lips um, in terms of the motor activity. And what we'll find, hopefully, is that when we're listening, when I'm listening to speech, there's greater motor activity in my lips than when I'm not listening to speech. And this would be a good demonstration of the fact that the motor system seems to play a role in understanding speech. My castaway this week is Dawn French. If you like funny, then you like her. Double act partner, sitcom star, sketch show performer, writer, actress. Her career started way back when dungarees were considered a legitimate fashion choice. And she's built her reputation on borderline surreal skits and glowingly warm characterizations. <laughs> So Joe, can you just talk us through um, what the results are from, uh, from the experiment that we've just carried out? Sure. So what happens is, having recorded all of those mo motor responses, we can then analyze how big they were, you know, how much of a motor response happened for each pulse, each stimulation. And what we see is that when I was listening to the, the Radio 4 program, the magnitude, the size of those effects, was much larger than when we were just listening to that white noise. And that's an indication that this part of the brain, the motor parts of the brain, was involved even though I wasn't doing anything actively. I certainly wasn't producing speech. I was just passively sitting there listening. And that's a good indication that this is part of the brain that is contributing to speech perception. The question then becomes, what exactly is it doing? How does it help? What are the limits? And that's the research that we're you know, moving forward, aiming to try to answer. So what does that tell us about the differences between us and animals. There's a really critical interaction between the parts of the brain that are processing sound and the parts of the brain that are used to produce the same sounds. Even though they're centimeters apart from one another, they obviously have to be interacting and talking to one another. And in fact, that kind of thing is really critical for any sort of verbal learning scenario. So the way kids learn to speak, for instance, is important and it requires those interactions. And that stands in contrast to, say, the way chimps or uh, many songbirds actually learn to produce their speech. It's almost intrinsic. They learn it without listening to others.
And that's one of the things that's very different between us and most other species, but it's a critical component of our ability to use language.